Good morning to all of you out there. Welcome this morning, May 12th, Wednesday morning. It is great to be with all of you. Thank you for joining us online this morning. We've been walking through some familiar scripture passages in the past couple of weeks, and today we continue that journey with one of my favorite verses in all of scripture. Now, I have many favorites, but this is one of those that is in my top five list. The verse comes from the midst of Jesus' teaching ministry, known to us in Matthew's Gospel as the Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew 5.16, we hear the verse that, that's my favorite today. It says in the same way, Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Ah, oh, what a powerful verse that is. As Lutheran Christians, we, we hold many traditions. Many of those are dear, and some are good, and some, frankly, are not so good. One of the good ones that comes to mind for me today is this verse, connected with baptism. At a baptism, we light the Christ candle, symbolizing that Christ is the light of the world. And as soon as that person is baptized, we take a little candle and we light it from that Christ candle and speak this verse from Matthew 5, 16. I firmly believe, firmly believe that it's connected with the Pentecost event, the, the birth of the Christian church in Acts chapter 2, where we are told this, And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the entire house where they, the disciples, were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. At baptism, we are forgiven of our sins and we are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. That's not a secret for us to keep for ourselves or keep hidden. It's meant to be shared. Jesus died and rose again so that we might be saved. That's a message that the whole world needs to hear. In John's Gospel, early in that first chapter, John the Baptist appears on the scene as a person sent from God. Here's what it says in verses 7 and 8 about John. He came as a witness, to bear witness to the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to wear, bear witness about the light. I hear a very important distinction in those words. He, John, was not the light, but he came to bear witness about the light. You know, oftentimes... I think we get those things mixed up a little bit. We think we're the light. We want people to look at us. We want to be popular. We want people to like us. I mean, who doesn't, right? The truth of the matter is that it's not about us pointing to ourselves. You see, that's where darkness and sin come roaring back into our lives. When we try to put ourselves in the center of our world, and make everything else revolve around that. John came to bear witness about the light. That light is Jesus. In one of his famous I am statements, Jesus bears witness about himself when he says in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And so that's a great reminder for us that Jesus is at the center of our lives and we should all revolve our lives around him. Darkness and light, good and evil, those are recurring themes in the Bible and they are powerful symbols in our world today. Darkness hides things. Criminals love darkness because they believe it covers their illegal activities. But light reveals what is hidden, and it shows us what something truly is. I don't know if any of you have had the chance to visit any of the caverns scattered around the United States, but there are several. Carlsbad Caverns, 
in New Mexico is probably one of the most famous in the United States. But there are several right here in Central Texas. There's interspace caverns in Georgetown. There are natural bridge caverns outside of New Braunfels. There are the Longhorn Caverns up in Burnett. One of my favorite and probably the most beautiful is Sonora Cabins just out west of here a little ways. It's been years since I've been there, but I remember that trip that we took there the last time very vividly. After that long descent, some 150 plus steps below the earth, I remember the guide gathering all of us as we were catching our breath from descending those many steps. And as he gathered us, he began to talk about the history of the caverns. And then, with some warning, thank goodness for that, he hit the switch and turned out the lights. Utter darkness. I mean, so dark, you can't even see your hand in front of your face if you put it like right here in front of your eyes. And after what seemed like an eternity, the guy turned on just a simple little flashlight. It's amazing how one little beam of light can make all the difference in the world. It cut through the darkness. It immediately took away any fears that people may have had. And yes, some people are afraid of the dark. And it brought hope. John 1, 5 tells us the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. That verse comes alive very vividly after being in total darkness down in the cavern in the bowels of the earth. But that's exactly what Jesus did for us. The world's full of darkness and brokenness and sin and evil. It's there. But none of those things can hold a candle to Jesus. His light is beaming. It cuts through the darkness to take away our fears, to bring us hope, no matter what we may be facing in this life. And the good news is that, that Jesus, as the light, will always shine brightly for us because darkness cannot overcome it, and it never will. Jesus suffered and died for us. But even the darkness of death could not defeat him. As Jesus rose victorious on Easter, he shines our light or let light in our lives forever. That never goes away. That never diminishes. He is always there to show us the way and guide us forward. That's the good news that you and I are called to share. So let your light shine knowing that it is a reflection of the light of Christ that others may see that light and be given the same hope and confidence that we have in our world today, knowing that Jesus is the light that leads us and guides us. Let us pray. Jesus, light of the world, shine in those shadows and those dark places in our lives so that we may recognize sin and evil for what it truly is and, and run away from it, Lord, from those things that threaten to devour us and destroy us. And may we run toward you. May we be drawn to your light so that our fears may be eased, our comforts may be given to us, and that you may give us hope as your light warmly washes over us, that we might experience your light, your love, and your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah. Powerful verse, powerful words, powerful image of Jesus as the light of the world. Just really one announcement here, and just a reminder that we have lessened our restrictions. We're beginning to open up a little bit more. So for our weekend services, we have three services each weekend here in person. So our Saturday evening, 6 p.m. and Sunday at 10.30 a.m. are mask optional. We continue to have the 8 a.m. service on Sunday morning as mask required for those that still have health concerns or concerns for COVID. So just a reminder about those a lessening of restrictions. And then also a reminder that all office visits or meetings or small groups are all mask optional. Outdoor meals right now are 
are available. I say available, we're not providing them, but outdoor meals are acceptable as long as the food's from a single source. And we'll, we'll visit with indoor meals and other things on a regular basis with our church council leaders. So please stay tuned for more of that. Hey, if you like the message today, go down below and hit that like button, or you can even subscribe to join us and get regular updates of our messages on the weekends and our weekly word during the week. Thank you for joining us and have a blessed rest of your week. Amen.